Hi, this is Kevin with Matt Practical. So tonight we're going to be working in ArcGIS Pro um, doing an image classification. So here's the setup. We've got a NAPE image here and it's been clipped to just an area of the golf course in East Missoula. And the golf course is called and said, uh, what's the acreage of all these greens, all this grass, so we can order some fertilizer? Well, you could hand digitize around all of the fairways and the greens and, uh, and then calculate the geometry. Or we could use the image classification tools to get us there. So I've set up an Arc Pro project. I send you out to um, the State Library, and if you just type in NAEP here for the National uh, Agricultural Image Program and hit search, it'll take you to another screen. And on the Historic tab here, um, we're going to go down to the 2015 NAEP ortho photos. You could go for the newer stuff. The 2017 has some holes in it uh, because of clouds and such, and the 2019 still hasn't all been processed. So the 2015 is the, the most complete data set. So you're going to click on that and then download data. And eventually it'll bring up this map that shows you all the different tiles. These are one degree by one degree tiles for the whole state of Montana. And you can zoom in. And down here is our humble little home of Missoula. Actually, we can go all the way in until we see campus. So there's the University of Montana right there. And just east of the university, is um, the country club golf course right there. So this is uh, tile number 1421. If you actually click on the name, it'll give you the download image. And you'll just download that. It's a Mr. Sid format. It's kind of an older image format, but ARC uh, can open it right up. Okay, so I've already done that. And uh, I'll close these out now. And I've already put it into a raw data folder that I created, so I'm just going to add the data. Go into my folders, image classification, in my raw data, there's that 1421.sid. We'll open that guy up. Maybe. Oh, it's thinking about it. It's pretty big tile, right? So it covers a huge area, which is why we're going to clip it, because otherwise it's just too big. We wouldn't want to do image classification on the whole thing because it would take forever and uh, would slow this demonstration tutorial way down, like it is right now. Huh, I wonder what the problem is. Well, we'll try and add it again. No, no, it's working, it's thinking. Maybe if I zoom out, it'll come in. There we go. Okay, so there it is. Um, right now, the whole thing, I think, is in this auxiliary web mercator. So I'm going to go to my map properties and, yep, go to my coordinates. And actually, I've already done this before. So under my favorites, I should have Montana State Plain. So we'll go ahead and hit that. There we go. Great. And then zoom in down to the golf course where we're going to work. We can do a couple things to our image. So uh, if you click on the actual image in the table of contents and then go to appearance, you can resample, type, go to bilinear. That'll smooth it out a little bit. Um, stretch type, I usually leave it in the percent clip and that'll give us a decent look. <clears throat> And it's a little bit whited out, but once we clip it out, it'll be a little bit better. So, And then I'm going to turn off the background streaming uh, base map. All right. Um, next thing I want to do is go over to my catalog view. And inside my geodatabase for this uh, lab, I'm going to go ahead and make a new feature class. And over here, I'm just going to call it my clip. And to polygon, that's great. And if I go to next... And eventually I can go ahead and set it. So I'm going to set it to my favorite that I have up here, which is that Montana State Plain. There we go. And then we'll just finish it. And it's just going to make a blank polygon layer um, that then I'm going to use the editing tools to, um, to create a, a circle to clip out the, the golf course by. So did it work? Let's see here. Yep, there it is right there. Okay, back to my map. Okay. Um, this looks pretty bad. What if I change my stretch type to stand dev? Does that look any better? Yeah, it's all a little bit whited out. Let's see. What about Esri? Does Esri give us a nice look? Not too bad. Well, that's going to change as soon as we clip it. So I'm going to um, add my blank clip polygon. It's inside of my database. Say OK. 
and I'm going to change its symbology by double clicking on its little symbol here, go over to properties and make this thing have no color and we'll go with a line color, something red, maybe a... there we go and hit apply and you won't see anything because it doesn't have any features yet but now here's where we're going to do it. So I'm going to highlight clip over in the contents I'm going to go to the edit uh, tab up here in the menu and then I'm going to hit create and it's going to bring this up and then if I select clip over here I should get some tools that show up and I'm just going to grab this circle tool right here. So the circle tool is, it starts from the middle so I'm going to try and kind of estimate the center and pull it out until it goes for the whole golf course, covers the river a little bit and then let it go and double click and it'll give me my circle and it's selected right now. So I cut off a little bit of this fairway in green right here. So there's another tool up in the editor, it's called Move. And I can just move this guy down a hair. Got to click on it maybe twice. There we go. And try and get everything. Go over a little bit, a little bit down. So you just need a little bit of the river, but you want to get all of the, the greens. And then click off when you're done. So that looks pretty good. Super. And then you're going to save it. So up here on the editing toolbar, I'm going to hit save. Yes, I want to save these edits. Great. All right, so now we're done with this create features. I'm going to go back to map. Over here in geoprocessing now, I'm going to find the extract by mask tool. That's how you clip rasters. Since I've already used it, it's kind of shown up, but you could search for it. So I'm just going to open that guy up. And we're going to clip the original um, SID image by the circle that we just created. All right, so the input raster is the 1421 Mr. SID. The feature mask is our clip. We're going to stick it into the geo database, and I'm just going to call this thing uh, the golf image. And it'd probably be better if I put a underscore in between. There we go. Super. And then under the environments, I'm going to make sure that this thing goes out as the current map. Net 83 state plane. So back to parameters and we'll run that. Should be pretty quick. And this is just going to make it a lot easier for us to run the classification tools. All right, there we go. Now I can turn off the original one and I'm just working with my new golf image. And if I zoom in, so there we go. So what we need to do is create training fields that look at the spectral signature of all the different veg and water and dry grass in this image. So um, if you have the image selected over in the table of contents and then go to the imagery tab up here, it brings up a whole bunch of tools. I played around with the classification wizard. I wasn't um, super satisfied with the results. It gave me a lot of intermediate steps and I think we can just do it easier with just going directly to the tools. So under classification tools, there's a no number of options. Segmentation is one way to, to classify the image. The training samples manager is really what we're after. That's the first step. And then we'll come back and use this classify tool here. So we'll open up the training samples manager. And I'll go ahead and put that out there permanently and stick the geoprocessing back in. Okay, so it comes in with a schema, which is kind of like a template of your different land cover classes. And the, the default is the national land cover data set. Uh, we're gonna make a new one. So I'm gonna go to create, new schema, there you go. And then if I right click on it and go to edit properties, I can name it. So this can be, you know, our training schema. And I'll hit save. Great. And then from there, I can right click on it again and say add new class. And my first class is going to be the grass. Some people call it greens, whatever. And then value one. Um, and then the color that it's going to show up on screen, which would be a bright green and hit OK. All right. And then you're going to make classes for a number of different things. So I'm going to also do one for the dry grass. So I'm going to right click and add another one. This is going to be dry and its value would be two. So the values don't matter much, they just need to be um, individual for each one, right? And I'll go with like a nice brown, hit okay. And so you would build this out by uh, creating classes. I'll make one more just for, for the heck of it, called water. 
And actually I ended up making one for trees and also impervious surfaces like roads and so forth. And the water will be like a bright blue. And there we go. Okay, so then you select the class that you're interested in and then choose which one of these tools you wanna to use to start sketching. So I'll just go with the, the standard polygon tool. And what you wanna do is zoom in on your image and take your time and actually, huh, for whatever reason, it's not actually drawing it. Let's try one of the other tools. How about this freehand tool? Oh, there we go. So the freehand tool lets you draw. You just have to be really careful. You double click um, to stop it, but that you don't grab any pixels of things that aren't in the class you want. So I'm working in my grass class, but I don't want to grab any of these sand trap pixels, right? So I can go ahead and draw one here. And you need at least five of them, but I would say in an image like this, it'd be a good idea to go ahead and put one on each one of the greens, right? So that one I might have gone down into the dry grass a little bit and that's the last one I created so I can just select it and delete it if I think that I made a mistake. And even though it has a kind of a ghost image, it's gone. So uh, I'll zoom in Oops, again, do a few more of these guys. All right. And then once you have um, a number of them, so I would maybe have 10 or 15, you would select all of your grasses and hold down shift. And then this little tool right here is going to collapse them all into one group. So there you go. And then maybe you would choose your dry grass and start digitizing those. Right? So what you're doing is creating training samples so that the computer can look underneath at the pixel values and say everything with this um, signature represents dry grass. Everything with this signature represents the, um, the green grass. Right? So it's good to just move around on the image and grab a few of these things. Right? And then of course put them together once you um, once you have a number of them, okay? Zoom out. Um, so in order to use them though, then you would have to save. So you're gonna have to save the schema, right? And the schema is gonna get saved to an output location, which is not the geodatabase. So it's just gonna go in the folder and hit save. And then the actual, um, the training samples, those will get saved as a feature class that you can put inside. So these are just gonna be my train samples. Okay, now I'm not gonna go through the whole process of doing them all. I'm just gonna use an existing one that I have. So if I go over here and turn on these training samples, you can see that I made samples that covered a lot of different water sources, all of the greens and green grass, uh, the impervious areas over the roadways and some of these parking lots, right? The dry grass, so on and so forth. So we're going to use those to help us identify the um, the classification schemes. Okay. All right. So once you're done with all that, let me go back to map, get my regular tool, and now I'm going to select golf. So whatever image you have selected over here, when you go to imagery, classification tools, classify, that's the one it's going to work with. So image classification, it's going to work on the golf image. Um, under the classifier, you have multiple different options. Support vector machine is the one at the bottom. Then you've got random trees. Those tend to work better if you were to run like segmentation or something, or maybe an NDVI. But I found that maximum likelihood works the best, at least for this, this run. You just have to experiment. And then there's this ISO cluster, which is totally unsupervised. You don't even need to do um, training samples for that one. You just let it run and let the computer try and um, classify every pixel that's in the image and put them into classes. You tend to have a lot of different classes if you run that one. So we're going to go with maximum likelihood. We're going to choose our training samples, right? We're not going to use the segmentation. And then we're going to go ahead and put it into our, um, into our geodatabase. It's a class image. It's going to create a raster, right? And then it's going to also output a, a definition file for how it um, looked at the different spectral signatures underneath our training samples. And you could use that to run on another image that's of a larger extent. Okay, and then we're going to hit run and see what we get. So it's training right now. It's looking at all those pixels underneath each one of the classes. And there we go. Okay, I'm going to turn off my classified, my training samples. And that's the class image. So we've got uh, water, we've got the trees that were down on the other side of the freeway, the freeway itself, the dry grass, and then all of these greens. They represent all of our um, areas that we want to spread fertilizer inside the golf course. Okay, so this 
image that it creates actually has an attribute table, unlike some rasters. So if we open it up, we can actually select just the greens. And I'll close it. And you'll see those are selected on screen. And then uh, I'm going to go back to my geoprocessing environments here. And I want to use this raster to polygon. So I'm going to convert this raster image to a vector polygon so that I can create a field and then measure the um, geometry. And because I have just the green selected, it's only going to export those. So I'll get that tool going. The import raster is going to be this class image. The field that I want anyways is going to be the class name. Um, I'm going to let it simplify polygons, but then I'm just going to name it. And this is going to be my, uh, my greens, right? Um, the simplify polygons doesn't do too much. This create multi-part features, this can really confuse people. If you check it, it creates a single feature for each class. If you leave it unchecked, it actually creates multiple parts. So, and we'll run that. Great, so it's finished. Uh, I'm going to go back to map, clear all my selections. I don't even need my class image on anymore. So there we go. And then let me change the symbology on these greens. And I'm going to go with no color. And I'm going to go with an outline color, something different, like yellow. Bump it up, hit apply. Okay, so there we go. It, it pulled them pretty good. There's a little bit of noise, but we can kind of fix that. So if we um, grab my selection tool, and I'm just going to hold down shift and go around and click on the greens and select just the ones that I know I want to measure. So we'll just go real quick through this image. Oops, I don't want to do that. What's going on there? Interesting. Um, there we go. Uh, grabbing that one. And then there's a couple little like uh, putting greens and so forth and driving ranges. So you're going to grab those. And you can see it's a little bit messy. You could start an edit session and go in and fix this up and get maybe even a cleaner vector. But this is just a rough estimate. We're just trying to avoid having to hand digitize every one of these things. Um, and if you're ordering something like fertilizer, you're always going to be doing some overage anyways, probably about 10%. So these little areas where the grass goes in between the houses and the country club and stuff, that's okay. But you could clean it up if you wanted to. So maybe I got a couple down here. And the whole reason I'm doing this is so we can delete all those extra little pixels that definitely aren't part of the greens. So I think I've got just about everything I wanted. Yeah. Oh, there's another little couple of putting greens right there. We'll grab those. Okay, great. And then I'm going to open up the attribute table. Maybe. There we go. And then in the attribute table, there's this um, nice switch. So it'll switch the selection. So I'm going to hit that. So that just switched the entire selection to all the things I don't want. And then I'm going to hit delete. And they're gone. And close that. I'll have to go to the edit tab and save my edits. Yes. Super. And so now I've got a pretty decent set of greens. Right. So there's still a little bit extra grass in between the houses and so forth. But like I said, it's OK to have a little bit over if you're making a big order for fertilizer. Now, of course, because we're dealing with a golf course that's right next to the Clark Fork River, they're going to have to use some organic fertilizer. We don't want the runoff to be highly toxic for all the nice trout in that river. OK, and we're going to open up the attribute table one more time. And you've probably been here before, but we'll just go through it, add a field. And its name is going to be Acres. And we're going to go with a double as far as the data type. And the reason I do that is so I don't lose too much to rounding error. And then over in numeric, instead of none, I'm going to choose numeric. And then change the decimals to two. Say OK. Great. And then you got to save that one. And then we're done with this field editor. Yes. And back here, now we have an acres field. And we right click on that guy and go to calculate geometry. We'll bring up that tool. So um, target field property is going to be area. The aerial unit is going to be acres. And the coordinate system is going to be the state plane, which is the current map. There we go. And we're going to hit run. And there we have it. So we right click on that field now for acres. And go to statistics. And it's going to make a little chart for us. 
which I don't necessarily need, but what I'm really after is the properties, which show up over here. And the sum of all of those greens is about 92.82, so we can call it 93 acres. And if I was making this order for fertilizer, I'd just round that up to 100. All right, we have a little bit of extra from some of the uh, messy vectors in there, but 100 acres worth of fertilizer would more than cover the project. And there's nothing worse than running out when you're almost done with the job, right? So close that out and close this guy out. So there we have it. So really quickly, we've managed to use the imagery tools to classify this image and, and pull a measurement for these, um, for these greens on the golf course. Pretty simple and um, not too painful. All right, uh, if this helped you in any way and you enjoyed the video, please like it uh, down below and subscribe to the channel. That'll help me out. And uh, that's all for tonight. Take care and we'll see you next time.